All right, cameraman says we're rolling. So we're rolling, let's get going. Got a lot of scripture today. This will be the last week of our Do Hard Things series. And then I kind of know what I'm talking about next week already, but I'm not even gonna give you a hint. So must be for radiant people, we'll see. Uh, we've been doing this series called Do Hard Things. And the reason I've been talking about doing hard things is because I believe, and I believe scripture backs me up, or maybe scripture says, and then I've interpreted scripture to say that it's the hard things in our lives that challenge us to grow and growing things change. And I would add to that today, growing people change the world. And I believe that's what we should be building as a group of kingdom-minded, kingdom-oriented people. Last week I talked about doing hard things in our own lives, in our own minds, and overcoming complacency. And complacency, I think, stems from not having a real serious love for Jesus Christ. Because if our love is serious for somebody, we'll go over land and sea to do anything for them, won't we? And I think there's a check, and I hope some of you guys did some work in your hearts uh, on whether or not there is a complacency in your life, whether your first love of Christ has turned into a second or a third or a fourth or maybe gone down that hierarchy, becoming a lower level of uh, care and, and um, for you. The second thing I think in doing uh, this work inside our own lives is overcoming fear. I think a lot of us are afraid to change because we don't know who we'll be. We get comfortable in the person that we are. We're comfortable in our relationships. I believe ego also comes into this area of change. Like we, I think I, I talked about this last week. If you believe that you know something, you can't learn something. Uh, and I believe if we think we know things, if we think we've figured this whole Christian thing out and we've settled into our way of life, the, the truth is that we've uh, really stalled because there is no being fully like Christ. There's always another growth step in front of the one that we've just gone past. So today I want to talk about doing hard things, not just inside ourselves, but doing outward things that are hard, being challenged to have relationships with maybe difficult people. Uh, challenged on doing things, putting yourself in places that are uncomfortable, speaking to strangers, introducing Jesus to people who are not in his relationship. Those are hard things to do, yeah? Like, how many of you just think it's easy to go up and just start talking to a stranger or even somebody that you know, a coworker, about Jesus? Just sit down at lunch and say, can I, can I just let you know about my Jesus? Can I just talk to you about Jesus? I believe the way that we live our lives out is, uh, and doing the hard things, the external things, is a way for us to introduce people to Jesus Christ. That's why I believe our serves are so important for us. They grow us out of our complacency, but they also create opportunities where people will ask questions about our lives and the hope that is within us. Today, I want us to think about doing hard things out there, out in the world. I believe our inward journey is often linked to our outward expression. I think the two are inseparable. We need to do those things. It's like the row, row, row your boat, right? If you're only rowing, if you're only working on the inside and you're not doing anything on the outside, you're probably just spinning in circles. That's probably the reality. To become, to become we have to be changed by our circumstances. Our circumstances are the portal by which we grow. The things that we do are the obstacles that we overcome, and those are what create the growth in our lives. I've been kind of fascinated lately on this archetypal idea of the hero's journey. The hero's journey, it's something that we all relate to. It's, it's everywhere in our culture, actually. It's in movies, it's in books, it's all over. And the hero's journey is essentially this. Somebody begins in a familiar, comfortable, complacent place, and they're summoned into a great adventure. They're summoned out from their place of complacency, their place of comfort. They're summoned out into a place that's unknown, unknown territory for them. 
And that's, you could be fearful in unknown territory, right? There are things in our own lives that we know God is probably challenging us to do and to become, but it's fearful and we haven't taken that step. No? It's difficult. It's fearful. Now, this hero's journey from there goes to calling forth the courage to overcome that fear and take on that territory. And you have to face the inner fear that you have. The hero has to face their inner fear. And if they're courageous enough, and if they continue on in this journey, then they can claim new ground. I'll give you a modern day example. It's not all that modern. It came out when I was a young child, I believe, maybe even right before I was born. The story of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. How many ever saw Star Wars and knew it was in the theater, right? You, you, you find Luke Skywalker on a, on a planet, I believe it was Tatooine that he lived on. He lived on Tatooine with his uncle and his aunt, I believe, if I'm getting this story right. And he's called into adventure. And he's not the Jedi that we know him to be at the end of the films. He's very timid. He's unsure of himself. But he's called into the place of life change because he leaves his complacent home and he moves out beyond his borders and takes on new territory and he becomes who he was destined to become. He reaches his potential. Luke Skywalker is one of those. Another one I just watched with my daughter Portia is The Hobbit. And at the beginning of The Hobbit, you find Bilbo Baggins sitting on his very cute, curated little Bilbo Baggins home. And uh, all of a sudden, he starts getting knocks on his door. And there are dwarves that just start showing up and invading his home. And his perfect little curated world turns into this crazy, chaotic, dinner table full of dwarves throwing food all over the place and then Gandalf comes in and tells them we're going on an adventure and we need a burglar so we need a burglar and Bilbo has to make this decision on whether he's going to stay in his perfectly curated little uh, town in his little curated home in his nice sweet little world or if he's going to answer the call to adventure and he chooses to answer that call to adventure. And Bilbo Baggins becomes a hero in the story. And Bilbo Baggins is changed by his adventure. See, these stories are so compelling because we all hear the call to adventure, to journey, if we're listening. All of us, there's a call for each and every one of us to adventure. I heard that call when I was living in Cyprus with my wife, newly married, and I had a decision to make on whether we were going to move into ministry or stay in our home by Huntington Beach where I had my financial services business and Janie was doing her thing in the general agency and we had a nice little life where we could go on these little weekend adventures and go to Cambria and have this life or whether we were gonna be called out into the uncomfortable and reach our potential. And I had no idea where this life would bring us, that we would be here today worshiping God in a park, growing a church and building the kingdom. But we embraced that journey and God has changed us. I'm a different human being and Janie is a different human being as a result because of answering that call. And each and every one of you guys have that same potential. Some of you guys have answered that call in many ways in your life, but it's not over. The journey is not over. There's no retirement for the king from the kingdom. You just continue to work along and continue to grow and continue to answer that call as God leads, leads you more and more into the uncomfortable, into the things out there beyond our safety and our security. The reality is there is no end to this journey. It's a life of adventure that we all continue on. And I will posit this to you today. There's no life worth living without adventure, without a hero's journey. A life of comfortability and sitting in your home and ignoring the world out there, I think is one of the most boring wastes of a life you could potentially ever have. I believe it's difficult to have children but I believe that children are one of the most rewarding things that you can do. I believe building the kingdom of God is difficult, but I believe building the kingdom of God is the most, one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do. I believe 
answering that call to adventure is necessary for every one of it, uh, every one of us, and it is the life worth living. But no adventure is without adversity. No adventure is without loss. No adventure is without cost. No adventure is without pain. The journey isn't easy, but it is worth it. I can tell you in the last 12 to 15 years of my life, it hasn't been easy. We've had to be in all kinds of different situations and there's always a challenge around the corner, right? When I think we've crested the mountain, you just figure out that the hill is a little bit greater. It just goes up a little bit higher. There's a little bit more to do. So what calls us into this journey? Who calls us into this journey? Who is, is it our own psyche? Is it our own mind? Is it our own sense of adventure? I think maybe partially, but it's the God of the universe that placed the spirit of his own son, his Holy Spirit inside of you, that is this echo and this call to adventure. It's God himself who calls us into our hero's journey, calls us from the comfortable into the uncomfortable. Now, what does it take to answer this call? There's a big word in scripture. It's a big word that starts with F. It's a short word, but it's a huge word. It's a weird word called faith. Because we have to have faith. We have to believe that we're not going to just go out there and be led into adventure to die and to be left alone. We have to have the faith to believe that as we go, our Lord God is going before us and making the crooked path straight. That he is leading us into righteousness. He's leading us in to his call. It takes faith. Now, some people who don't understand Jesus Christ would say that faith is a childish way of thinking. And I disagree with that. It's, it's childish to believe and have faith in something if there's not a powerful being or a powerful force on the other side, right? If I have faith to jump off a, a cliff, and the reality is I'm willing to jump off of a cliff because I have a bungee cord that's very strong holding on to me. It doesn't take a lot of faith because I'm relying in the bungee cord to suspend my weight. If it can hold a thousand pounds, I'm not worried whether it's going to hold me. And the same is true of this sensitive venture. When we have faith in God, we know that he will sustain us. We know that he will lead us. We know that he can be there. And that faith is not childish, it's very adult. It's very mature. I believe that this faith is what God requires for this hero's journey. Trusting God when I can't see clearly where he's leading me, that is the kind of faith that we need. Not because we believe that we know and we're certain that it's going to turn out perfectly in the way we've thought, because how many of you guys have lived life with Jesus Christ for a while? Hardly ever turns out the way that you've thought. Hardly ever but it always turns out just the way God wanted it to turn out, does it not? It does. This faith journey is an invitation to this hero's journey. Now I wanna read from Hebrews chapter 11. If you read through the whole passage, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read several paragraphs of this because I want us to look and see that all of the heroes of faith stepped out into somewhat of a hero's journey that God built faith in them, led them to conquer new territory for the ones who would come behind them. Hebrews 11 starts out and says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Faith is the evidence of things we cannot see. And through these people's faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. Verse eight says, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed what God called him to leave home and go to another land and God would give him his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was even going. The call to adventure. He even, and even when he reached the land God promised, he lived there by faith for he was a, like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. How many of us feel like we're living as foreigners in this world, but yet we're still to go out on adventure and to take ground, to live this life for the kingdom of God? It goes on speaking of people of faith, people like Abel 
and Enoch and Noah and Sarah and Jacob and Moses and Rehab. And if you and Rahab, if you read through all of those stories throughout Scripture, those people stepped out in faith into the uncomfortable and they were met by the God of the universe and their lives were transformed. Verse 13 goes on and says this, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I believe we find ourselves as foreigners here, as Christians, we're being more and more ostracized and persecuted, but it's still our job to build the kingdom here. Even though we know this is not our home, this experience of this earthly life is not our home. There is a home beyond. I talked this week about my grandmother and how she's no longer chained to the chaos and brokenness of this world, but she's been set free to experience life the way that God fully intended. And yet in this foreign land, we are to go on into adventure and do hard things because we're supposed to be building this kingdom. Verse 24 said, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people, doing a hard thing. That's not in there. But the oppression of God's people, instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin, he thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle the blood on the door st doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn. 32 says, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. I like the way that it puts that. They became strong in battle. It's as though they became strong as a result of being in the battle. We're called to doing hard things because the strength of the Lord will well up in us as we do those things. You might think I'm not prepared. I can't do this. But you can, you step out in faith, knowing that God's going to meet you and fill you with his power in those moments. God is looking for a people of faith, people who trust him, people who believe in him, people who believe in big, big dreams. So why do these hard things? What we've talked about and one of our core values here is that growing things change. Growing things change. I believe this, what you need most, uh, what you most need will be found where you least want to look. What you most need will be found where you least want to look. It's the areas in your own life where you think, I don't want to go and do that. It's too hard. The adventure, I see the adventure awaiting, but I don't want to leave it because I'm comfortable. It's too hard hard out there what you most need will be found where you least want to look it's in the adventure that you'll find what you most need you'll find the treasure that god has held up for you it's in the midst of the trial your treasure is found in the midst of the trial that which you fear is the gateway to what you need to know and become what you fear most is the gateway 
to what you need to know and become. These hard things are worth it. Not only for you, but for those who look up to you, for those who are coming behind you, for the children who are watching you, for the others whose faith is made stronger by watching you overcome and seeing God move on your behalf when you stepped out into adventure. You know, it builds a boldness in us when others are conquering territory. If you've ever watched a war movie and you see there's a battle going on and you start to see this uh, bat, this, uh, this army start to take the ground there's a new boldness that comes in the rest of those who are fighting and they want to fight even harder because they're like we are on the verge of winning right now these hard things are worth it not only for us but for others there's a time in scripture in the book of isaiah when god says he needs a messenger and isaiah says here am i lord send me And I question sometimes, are we the type of people who would answer God's call to adventure the same way when he needs a messenger, when he needs someone to act in service, when God needs us to go beyond our comfort zone, would we say, here I am, Lord, send me. Is that who we are? Are we those types of people? If we're not, I hope we get there. The God who awakens faith in his people is the same God who awakens heroes. I don't know about you, but I want to be a hero of the faith. I want to be counted a hero of the faith. I want people to look to the example of my life and say, I want to, I want to own life like Jeremy did. I want to love life like Jeremy did. I want to go into adventure. I want to be bold like Jeremy was. I want to look to you guys and say, I want to be bold like you are. I want you to inspire me. It's the way this is supposed to work. I want you to give me a little leeway here. I'm not going to try to spout some heresy. But I want a little bit of leeway here. I believe if we take a look at God from before time, God goes on somewhat of a hero's journey himself. What do I mean by that? God was already fully satisfied within his own being. God needed nothing to satisfy himself. He didn't need the world. He didn't need the universe. He didn't need you or I. He did that out of his very love. God himself goes on this journey. It's an example for all of us. He was comfortable with himself. He needs nothing. He wants nothing. God is perfect in himself. And yet he goes on a journey and makes creation. He creates the universe and all of the stars and all of the planets and a little planet called Earth to which he puts his most prized possession that he knows is going to fail him. And he is going to have to go into the uncomfortable to become the hero to create a path of salvation for you and I. So if we look at God from the beginning of time, or where there is no time actually, from the beginning of our time, it seems as though God is an example of this hero's journey in and of himself because he makes creation, it falls, and then Jesus has to come to earth and live a hero's journey here on earth. What comes of this journey is salvation for you and I and all mankind, an example a perfect example to live on how we should live and relate to other human beings in this earth. See, I believe God went on an adventure so he could bring us salvation because God overcame. We can also. We overcome because he overcame. And like Christ's hero, hero's journey, Christ's salvation is for us. He overcame and created salvation for us that is the result of the journey of Jesus Christ to the cross. He provided a way for us. And if we will embrace our own journeys, we will provide a way for others to follow in our footsteps and to embrace their own journey. We'll give them the faith and the confidence to do the same. It's kind of been the example of our church Activate Church started doing serves 
every month or two, right? And then it caught on, like now Radiant is wanting to be part of those things with us, right? They're saying, hey, yeah, we want to leave our place of comfort. Grace is coming alongside now and saying, you know, we, we believe there's a calling out there for us. We believe there's a place for the churches of Huntington Beach to usher in the kingdom of God. And it's not going to happen by inviting people into our buildings. We as a collective have to go on a journey together. And because we have kind of forged a path on what does work when you get out and you love and serve people, then it's not that we figured it out on our own. We just were obedient to what Jesus Christ did. He went out into public. He loved and served people. And we followed his example. And the reality is because our church has done those things, now others are looking to us to follow in our footsteps and be alongside us. What is going to result in that from that? Is that people are going to meet Jesus. People are going to be given the opportunity of salvation. They're going to have a pathway to their own journey. They're going to be able to live the life and reach the potential that God has created for them and destined for them. They will meet their destiny. So I have a few questions for us today. What is the thing? I think I, how did I put that? How did I put that back here? Uh, where is it? Is it on the first page? Okay. I can't find it. What's God calling into you? I'm calling you into because I believe that your treasure is going to be found in the middle of the trial. The thing you're looking for, the thing you're praying to God for right now, the thing that you want, or maybe the thing that you don't even know there, that maybe the Holy Spirit is just prodding you on right now. You're not even there cognitively. You don't even know what this adventure potentially is, but you know there's something. Your blessing is in that trial. The question is, what is God calling you into personally? I mean, we're going to do things as our church, right? But there are things in your own life, your own journey that you must go through to be called a hero of faith, to be a faithful one. So when we stand in front of Jesus Christ, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Why? Faithful and servant indicates that we were faithful to the journey and to the adventure and we had faith and we served, we did hard things. Faithful servant, we did hard things in service to our king. Question is, where will your journey take you? Where is it gonna take you? What is this journey? Turning from sin and devoting yourself to God? Modeling a Christian lifestyle for your children? Discipling your children? Discipling family members? living out with faith, a faith-filled life, a loving, caring, kind life looks like in front of those around you, beginning a ministry of service of some sort, coming alongside somebody who has a dream in their heart and saying, I know you can't do this alone. Here I am. Let me help you. Let me help you on your journey. Maybe my journey is tied in with your journey. Maybe it's overcoming addiction. Maybe it's growing into more of looking like Christ. Whatever that journey is, I'm, I'm imploring you to step out and embrace it. Do it. Do the hard work. Step out of the comfortable, complacent life that we curate and craft for ourselves. The adventure awaits and the adventure is worth it. I. I would give my whole life to go on this adventure with Jesus Christ. I'd lay it all down over and over and over again. He's always been faithful to me. And I'll put it this way and then we'll close. The, the truth of the matter is this. A lot of people like my grandmother, I'm not saying this was her, this was not her idea, but a lot of people wait to say, you know, I can't wait to see Jesus until I die. I can't wait until I die and I get to meet Jesus. I get to see his power. I get to see him face to face. And to that I say, forget about that. My Bible tells me I can have Jesus right now. I can know Jesus intimately, 
in this life. So when I see him face to face, it'll just be a new revelation of him. But I'll know him because he's my Jesus. That's the adventure I want us all to live. Because we're all being called. The question is, will we answer like Isaiah and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come on us heavy this week. Heavy in our hearts. Heavy in our minds. That your Spirit would bring a next step of clarity. Not that we would get it all, Lord, but that we would see our next step and we would be bold enough to take that journey. God, I know what it's like to be a church member and show up to church each week and become complacent in my life, thinking that I know enough and know a lot, and I got it figured out. And again, that ego sets in. Lord, I pray against the spirit of ego and complacency. I pray that there would be a fresh anointing and awakening in our spirits, that we would be energized and made alive, and that we would respond to your call as Isaiah did. Lord, here we are. Send us. We ask these things in your name. Amen.